Hello and good morning, Joanna. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Absolutely fantastic and very proud of your brand new book. This is not just a great story. This book is a work of art. Thank you so much. I mean, I mean, you as an adult, I, I go from page to page and I'm just blown away. I want to see this in a live gallery scene is what I want to do with your physical words written on the pages. I would love that so much. <laughs> Amanda Pungodapaki's art is just stunningly gorgeous. How did you guys even team up? Yeah, that's such a great question. It's a, actually a really unique story for most picture books. So the idea for this book really came from my editor, who in the middle of the pandemic, at the height of you know very modern day anti-Asian violence and rhetoric, she said, you know, I think it, we need a book um, that kind of tells our history and just something that's really powerful in this way. And she didn't give me any more direction than that, but she said, I'd love you to write it. And I would like Amanda Pumbodapaki to illustrate it. And up until that point, Amanda had never done a picture book. She's a multidisciplinary artist. She does murals and installations and like public works campaigns all over the world. Um, and so I met up, Amanda's in New York and I'm in California and um, she happened to be in Oakland painting a mural. So I went up and I had lunch with her and sort of talked to her through the idea of the book and she was very smart. Like, that sounds like a great idea, but why don't you show me the manuscript first before <laughs> I commit to a project? So after a year, at like a year and some change later, after I finished the book, um, I sent it to her and just am so grateful that she was moved by the words and decided to take on the project because she just adds such symbolism and layers and intentionality in her art that I don't think anyone else could have for this specific project. And isn't it strange in the way that, you know, because so many children and young readers judge a book by how thick the book is. And and you're saying that it took over a year to put this book together. And yet it's like, whoa, it takes us 10 or 15 minutes to read it, but it took you over a year to bring it to us. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I researched the book for a big the majority of that year. It was just researching all of the history that um, inspired the way that I wrote the book and, and so much of which is captured in the words of the book and included in the back matter. I actually, not so much, there's like a fraction of the history I learned that's included in the back matter, but it's there hopefully as an invitation for people to continue learning about the history, so much of which has mm -hmm. really been erased and just made invisible in our history books, but that inspires every word. Um, and all of the art on these pages. Being a martial artist, the one thing that my Taekwondo uh, instructor uh, made us do, he says, before you even learn this art, you have got to learn the history of Korea. And 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 mm. that and that's the one thing that has always been so he you know heavy on my heart because I mean you're doing that exactly here. You are showing people the history before we got to this moment of right now. Right, and I think it's so important to learn that. I love that that's what your Taekwondo teacher taught because I, the more I learn, because I feel almost unrooted up until I wrote, researched and wrote this book, I feel like I've gained roots and a connection to shoulders that I stand on, um, that all of us really stand on, and just a deeper understanding of who we are as Asians, but as humans, yes. and who we always have been, and also who we can be and must be in the future. Being an educator, that's helped you out when it comes to making that connection with readers, hasn't it? I think it has. I mean, in this book in particular, the educator part of me really comes in strong in that back matter where it's like several pages of lots of, um, for every single page of the book, there are guiding questions to help readers continue their learning and then bullet points of things quite literally that were included in my draft that I sent to my editor that I sent to Amanda to show this is all the history that inspired each word or each line so that they would know the significance and I I just know for me like the majority of readers probably also don't know the history because we don't learn it That's I didn't it. know the history so my hope is that people will flip through the back to look at that history and then to go back into the text and see what um, what all the deeper meaning and the layers in the text are and I think that back matter really comes from my experience as an educator and my desire to how people continue to learn. <laughs> Can you imagine if you would have walked in the library and, and spotted this book as, as a child? Oh, 
Oh gosh, I can't. I mean, even just the, the pictures alone, the way Amanda drew such a diversity of Asian people and the, the way that they look, but also the expressions, the strength and the power and the softness on their faces. They're not, it's just so different than the ways that Asian people are typically depicted in yep. the media and in um, Hollywood. And so just that, the images alone, I think would have been game changing for me as a kid. Probably one of the biggest ones that, that touched me, the stories, when they came. Oh, my God, my heart continues to swell on this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, when they came for that, which was not theirs, that page, I think, really speaks to so much of the history of imperialism and colonialism of, of the ways that the West has gone into Asian countries and, you know, really done a lot of things and taken things and affected systems there such that many people were either literally forced in chains mm -hmm. to come or mm -hmm. forced by circumstance to come here because of like the pillaging and ravaging of the homes and cultures and ways of life that they knew. And I think that um, that connection was also really new for me in understanding even my own personal history of why my family came and how connected that is to the systems and the histories and patterns in the world. One thing that, that listeners need to understand, especially the YA readers that, that want to be uh, writers as well, and, and that is is that you said something a few minutes ago that was very important. The research that you put into this product, and, and, and the thing is, is that, that for, and readers need to understand, this isn't just going to Google or Yahoo. You physically went out there and dug in to get the stories. Yeah, I really did. I mean, I read... I mean, it's like the pandemic, so I couldn't go anywhere and physically interview people, but I read tons of books. I reread some books and just took notes. I watched documentaries. I did do some interviews, and I tried to visit as much as I could historical sites that were accessible to me. And um, I just, for me as an author, I oh, and even in a fictional silly book, I always do research. It just helps to ground me yep. and help me find the through line and the heart of the story that I want to tell. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, you, you give them an identity, but it's in your words. There's no cut and paste here. These are your words and you're giving them an identity. That's right. Right. I think it's less about me giving an identity and me trying to capture. Yes like the community and who we are and who we always have been but in ways that speak from our hearts instead of ways that other people want to portray us is is this a book of declaration yeah absolutely i mean it's i think it's a call to action it's a declaration yep. it's a call to unity and solidarity it's um, a call to just use our voices and rise up together in our community but also in connection with other communities as well. My hope is that, you know, that this does speak to the Asian community, but also that as other people outside that community read it, they can find also shared points of history, of experience, of feeling, and just recognize like a greater common humanity and need for all of us to be more united. I wonder how many elders are going to pick this book up and are going to be blown away by it because of, because of your truth and your transparency in it. Yeah, I think that's such an interesting question. I find that um, because of the ways that other generations have processed or have been raised or have found ways to survive, something that feels so distinctly like a call to action and change and revolution and resistance um, is sometimes jarring in a way that has shaken you know out of a space of assimilation and fitting yeah. in and climbing the ladder. Um, my hope is that it's it's jarring in a good way that helps people rethink the ways they've always thought and will shift the ways that they act so that, you know, we can all feel that greater light together. Yeah. Where can people go to find out more about you and to give you lots of love? Because you've got so many books out there <laughs> that need to be in people's personal libraries. Oh, thanks so much. I mean, my website is joannahowrights.com. You can find all of my books on there. You can find most of my books in almost any anywhere you find books. And I would always support people to check out their local indie bookstores. And if they're not there at, or at the library, you can always request. And then people will know that there's interest. Oh, man. you got to come back to this show any time in the future. You know the door is always going to be open for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here today. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Okay, you too.